previous section, we deployed a startup RT application from the Project Explorer. By the end of this module, you will be able to communicate with a deployed RT application. Okay, so at this point, we have a deployed application. So we have a startup RT application that's running on our RT target. So how will we communicate with that startup RT application? Well, one way is we would create a VI on the host computer and we would communicate with it as talked about in lesson six. So remember we talked about different methods for network communication between the RT target and the host. So we talked about doing network published shared variables. We talked about doing network streams. We talked about standard protocols such as TCP and UDP. So we can use all those methods in our host computer to talk to our RT application. Also, if we needed to debug the RTEXE, so for example, let's say we, we deployed it to our Compact Rio, okay, and it's running there as a standalone startup RT application. Well, if things aren't working exactly correctly and we wanted to figure out what's going on, there's something called the debug application tool that we can use to actually connect to that standalone RT application and debug it. So how would we use the debugging tool? So one thing you want to do is when you're creating your RT application and creating the build specification for it, you want to go to the advanced category as shown here and enable the debugging option. So that's circled here in red. So make sure that's checked, then build your startup RT application and deploy. Okay, so now that you have your RT application deployed to your RT target and you've got that enable debugging option selected, now on your host computer, you can open up LabVIEW, and then on the menu bar, you can select Operate, Debug Application, or Shared Library. And then once you've done that, you can enter in the IP address of the target, as you can see at the bottom of this slide, and then you can hit Refresh. And then after you hit Refresh, you should be able to see your application show up there. So then you can select your startup.rtexe application, and then hit Connect, and then that'll open up a, a front panel and block diagram of the RT application. And that way, even though it's a standalone RT application, you can actually start debugging it and using your highlight execution, probes, breakpoints, and things like that. So it's a very useful tool for you to be able to debug a standalone RT application after it's been deployed. So let's jump into LiveView and take a look at how this actually looks in action. Okay, so let's take a look at this in LiveView. So like I said, you need to go to your build specification, and let's go to the properties. And we need to make sure that the enable debugging is selected. So you'll find that under advanced. You want to make sure that enable debugging is selected, which I've already done here. Click OK. And in this case, I've already built this build specification. And I've already set this as my um, as my startup. OK, so notice there's a little green border around here. So this is already running on my RT target. OK, so now that it's running on my RT target and I've enabled debugging, I can use LabVIEW in my host computer, and I can go to Tools, or I can go to Operate, and then go to Debug Application or Shared Library. Okay, so I'm going to select this option. Notice that it gives me this window. Um, I put in the IP address of my RT target in this case. That's running my um, my RT application, and I can hit Refresh. So in, in this case, um, it's, it, it already showed up, but if, if there's nothing in here, you want to click Refresh first and this will give you a list of things that you can connect to. In this case, I'm going to connect to my startup.rtexe application. Okay, so now I'm going to click connect. And it's downloaded all the stuff, so... If I go to the block diagram here, notice I can actually see the block diagram, and I can go ahead and debug as normal. So notice I've got my highlight execution. In this case, I'm going to open up the logging and network communication sub-VI, and let's go ahead and go to the block diagram here. Okay, so notice I can go ahead and do highlight execution. And even though this is a standalone RT EXE, I can actually use highlight execution. I can use I can use probes. So I can select this right here and take a look at the probe values. I can use breakpoints. I can do single stepping and things like that. So let me go ahead and close this now. I'm going to close the probe. I'm going to close... Oh, let me go ahead and just save this. Let me close this. And let's say I've, I've gone in here, I've done all my debugging, and I figured out my problem. 
So at this point, I can go ahead and disconnect. I can right click over here, go to remote debugging, and I can do quit debug session now that I'm done. And now I'm done debugging, uh, the application is now still running, and I'm good to go. So uh, this is a very useful technique for debugging an RT application once it's already been deployed. Now you can communicate with a deployed RT application. Next, we will identify what skills you need to develop a successful real-time system and where to find resources to develop those skills. In the previous section, we communicated with a deployed RT application. By the end of this module, you will be able to identify what skills you need to develop a successful real-time system and where to find resources to develop those skills. Okay, so what else do you need to know? Let's first start with what this course has prepared you to do. So now you can detect and configure an RT target. You can create an RTBI with a deterministic loop and non-deterministic loop, and you can also communicate between those loops on your RTBI. You can also create a host BI that's on your host computer, and you can communicate between the host computer VI and also the RTBI on your RT target. And you can communicate latest values, you can communicate buffer values. So now you have the skills to prototype an RT application. Here we see a list of real-time topics that the course has not prepared you to do. So at this point, with just the knowledge that we've talked about so far, right now you don't have the skills to create a professional RT application that can run reliably for long uptimes and monitor its own system health. Okay, so this is an advanced topic, and if this is something that you need to do, we're going to tell you where you can learn how to do that. Also, we haven't talked about implementing advanced RT architectures. We also haven't talked about some more advanced scalable methods of inter-process communication on the RT target and also network communication between the host and RT target. Uh, we also haven't talked about how to use system replication techniques to efficiently deploy an application to several RT targets. These are some other things that you might need to know depending on your application needs. So one good resource to find out uh, what skills you need for your application and also where to find how to learn those skills is the LabVIEW Skills Guide. So if you go to ni.com slash skills guide, you'll see the pages that you see at the bottom, and you'll be able to go over to the hardware skills tab and select embedded control and monitoring. And then in that tab, you'll be able to kind of choose what your needs are, and then it'll give you a list of the skills that you need to accomplish that. And uh, it'll also tell you what courses will teach that skill, and it also gives you learning resources that are available on ni.com for free to also learn those same skills. So definitely visit the skills guide and figure out what skills you need to learn. Next, we'll discuss a couple of additional resources that you can use to develop some more skills. So we'll talk about the Compact Rio Developers Guide, the LabVIEW Real-Time Help, the LabVIEW Real-Time Sample Projects, and NI.com. So here we have the Compact Rio Developers Guide. This is a PDF that is available for free. It's actually in your exercises folder already. And if you want to make sure you have the latest information, you can always go to ni.com and search for a Compact Rio Developers Guide, and that'll give you the most recent edition of this particular guide. In this guide, as you can probably tell from the name, some of the things that are talked about are going to be Compact Rio specific. However, there's a lot of best practices and strategies that are applicable to all RT targets. So some of those include design patterns. We talk, There's additional inter-process and network communication methods that are a little bit more advanced. There's also how to deploy and replicate systems and things like that. So there's, there's much, much more. Um, also, there's some useful CREO specific information. So in this guide, we talk about the NI scan engine and FPGA. We talk about compact real architectures, we talk about T-series module IO, things like that. So there's a lot of content available on this free resource. Also, the LabVIEW real-time help is a great resource to learn about the details about real-time. There's also a section for LabVIEW real-time best practices, so you can go into that best practices portal and, and you can take a look at several things in more detail. So there's going to be detailed information on the RT functions and BIs, of course. There's also going to be high-level topics like benchmarking and things like that. You'll get detailed information about concepts such as priorities and sharing data and also creating RT applications. So there's a lot of information that ships with the product and the help as well. Another thing that comes with LabVIEW real-time is sample projects. So if you go to create project, you can navigate, as you can see on the bottom, to sample projects and real-time. The one that's selected over there is a LabVIEW real-time control application. And you can go ahead and select this. And what it'll do is it'll generate an entire sample project for a sample application. 
and you can take a look at this application and it uses a lot of best practices. That way you can see what a complicated application could look like. And also it uses techniques that we've learned in LiveView Realtime 1, also in LiveView Realtime 2, Core 2, and the LiveView Core 3 courses as well. So at that second bullet, you see that there's a couple of available RT sample projects. Those three are ones that I would recommend that you take a look at just to see what a sample application looks like. In this section, we'll talk about different courses that you can take to continue your learning. So one course that you can take is the LiveView FPGA course. So if you are using real time and you also have an FPGA available to you, so for example, if you have a Compact Rio, Singapore Rio, or you have a PXI RT system with a R-Series board in it or some other FPGA device, then you can take this course to figure out how to take advantage of the FPGA. So with the FPGA, it's actually implemented on hardware. Your logic that you create in software would be implemented on an FPGA chip. So that's going to give you faster I.O. times. It's going to give you even better performance and better reliability, even better determinism. You're going to be able to do things like custom triggering, timing, and synchronization. So if you need to harness that uh, speed and that reliability and that performance, then you can take a look at the FPGA course. Uh, programming FPGA VIs is a little bit more complicated, but you can get more performance out of it. Also, you can take some other courses such as DAC and signal conditioning. So for example, if you're using a PXI RT target and you have DAC hardware in there, then you can take this course or read resources on NI.com to figure out how to use the DAC API and the DAC driver. To further your LiveView real-time knowledge, you can take the LiveView real-time 2 course. And this course, we're going to talk about things such as designing your application and your processes, how to do some advanced inter-process communication methods, and also advanced network communication methods. We'll talk about memory management, techniques that you can do to increase the reliability of your RT application if you want it to run for an extended amount of time and not crash and things like that. Also, benchmarking and validation methods we'll talk about if you need to benchmark different loops in your application. Uh, we'll talk about uh, host and target embedded architectures. We'll talk about some more time loop features, comprehensive error handling, how to implement that in your RT application. We'll talk about how you can monitor your system health on your RT target from within your RT BI. We'll also talk about an RT watchdog, which is an interesting concept, and also uh, how to replicate your system programmatically. We'll also talk about some advanced debugging tools that are available, such as the real-time execution trace tool. And for general LabVIEW best practices and techniques, you can also take the LabVIEW Core 2 and 3 courses, and we'll learn how to develop scalable, readable, and maintainable VIs. We'll also talk about implementing event-based programming. So these are some things that you can do on your host VI. And yeah, just being able to create better user interfaces for your host VI and better techniques that you can use on your host VI as well. Congratulations, you have now completed the LabVIEW Real-Time 1 self-paced online training. During this course, you learned a lot of things. So now you can understand real-time concepts such as jitter and determinism. You're able to now configure real-time hardware targets. You're able to prioritize and communicate between multiple processes, loops, and VIs on your RT target. You're also able to create a host computer piece where you're able to have a host VI and communicate with your uh, real-time target. So now you've learned all the skills that you need to take advantage of a real-time target and be able to prototype a deterministic real-time application. Thanks for your time.